Good God morning. Good God morning. Let me get a little closer. <laughs> yes, let me get a little closer. Right. Because I like to see you and be seen, right? Oh, let's breathe. Holy Father, open our hearts, open our minds, open our life to you, Father God that we may have a conscious connection to be more, to do more, just in being you. Father, we ask you to bless everything and everyone in our life, consciously and unconsciously. Father, God, give them the strength that they need, the understanding that they need to proceed on your road, Lord. Ah, it is a glorious thing to have freedom, to know who the creator is. The universe wants to bless us indeed. And all we need to do is say yes. So we say yes to you this morning. As we wake up and start our day and continue our day living in the being of you. Ashe. And so it is. Namaste, guys. How are you? Namaste, namaste, namaste. The God in me honors, acknowledges, and loves the God in you. So I say good morning. I am Rosa J, doing it God's way each and every day. I am the author of I Am Affirmations for the Living. You can go to my R I am R O S A. H.J. page, or it's also called the I Am Affirmation page, and order my book. God always tells you who you are. I was talking to someone yesterday, and they were saying that they weren't ready. See, if, you, if I wait around until I am ready, I will never do anything. Because God prepares me and orders my steps as I am being who he desires me to be. Are we ever really ready? Do we really believe that we are ready to undertake anything? I remember when I was 13, I asked God, I counted out, I knew I wanted children. And at 13, I realized that a woman has to want children in order to nurture children because a mom is always there and i planned that whole thing out and when it happened i was like 26 i guess when it happened yeah and um i realized i really didn't know how to be a mom i was not ready but here it is 40 some years later and my child is amazing. And I know only through God, God did that. See, so we step into these places that we are not sure of, but nothing will change if we wait to be ready. We have to open our hearts to everything good that God has. There's a story about a man who went to heaven. And when he got there, God was giving him, um, I don't know, Michael, or was it Gabriel? Gabriel was giving him a tour of heaven. This is a story. So as they walked around, they saw the parties and the food and the joy and the love and the sunshine and all of that. They passed by doors and uh, he allowed them to look into the different halls that they had there and they crossed this door that was open and this light came gleam, gleaming out. And the man said, what's in that room? Because all he could see was light. He said, I want to go in. Gabriel said, you really don't want to go in there. You really don't want to go in there. He said, of course I do. You let me go into all the other rooms, let me go into this one. So when he stepped into the room, he saw all these boxes, rows and rows and columns and columns of boxes as far as the eye could see and further. And on each box, there was this little gold label. And so the man asked Gabriel, 
What, what's this all about? He said, Gabriel said, these are the, uh, these are uh, the history of all the people who ever came to earth. And he said, really? He said, well, is my name up here? Of course, he had died, so he was an earthling. <laughs> he said, sure. So they went hunting for his name. And finally, after a long search, they found his name. He said, can I open it? Gabriel said, you really don't want to open that box. I'm telling you, you do not want to open that box. And he said, yeah, I do. I really want to see what's in the box. Okay. So Gabriel said, go ahead, go ahead, open the box. The man started pulling the box out. And all the other boxes across the room kind of moved because the box was huge and it was long. And in big, bold letters, it said, these are all the blessings God desired you to have, but you never, ever asked for them. God can't bless you if you never ask for a blessing. God can't give you all that he desires to give you if you wait to be ready. We learn as we go. We come on in this planet and we learn. Remember when you first started walking, you had to crawl or scoot or whatever. And then you got up and you held on. And then you took a step. And then you took a next step. And you may have fallen, but you got right back up. Well, that's what life is all about. Life is about getting back. And the Course in Miracles for me is a way to learn to get back up. Yes. So today we're talking about Lesson 68. Love holds no grievance. Say it to yourself. Love holds no grievance. Love holds no grievance. Love holds no grievance. I want to give you some synonyms of what grievance is because sometimes we misconstrue what it means to have grievances. So from the dictionary, and I have it on my phone, it says, a real or imagined wrong or other cause for complaint, protest, especially unfair treatment. Some of the synonyms are unjust, unjust acts, wrong, injury, ill, offensive, um, offense, disservice, unfairness, evil, uh, uh, outrage, damage, affront, assault, indignity, complaints. When we're complaining about something or we're uh, criticizing, objecting, uh, protest, pro, protest, charge, grumble, moan, quibble, <laughs> grudge, ill feelings, hard feelings, resentment, bitterness, oh man, griping, grouching, beefing, it's a million different words. Hi, how are you, Ruth? There are a million different ways we grieve. We have grievances against things that are happening to us. It's a huge word that takes in all kinds of things. So love holds no grievances. That means that you have to forgive. So let's go into what the lesson says. Forgiveness is the way, right? And remember, love um, created you as itself. It says, you have, you who were created by love like itself, can hold no grievances and know yourself. You can't hold grievances and still say, I know myself. I remember I used to say that all the time. I know who I am. No, I am not the person that I thought I was years ago. 
To hold a grievance is to forget who you are. To hold a grievance is to see yourself as a body. And that goes back to the fact that we live in this body, but we're really spiritual beings. Spiritual beings can do grievances. Physical bodies have a lot of grievances. Our minds talk about it all the time. We complain about everything. To hold a grievance is to let the ego rule your mind and to condemn the body to death. Let me repeat that because this is, this is important. To hold a grievance is to let the ego rule your mind, not God, to condemn the body to death. How many times do we complain about how we feel? Love holds no grievances. And if you are love, creates itself, how can you complain? Perhaps you do not yet fully realize just what holding a grievance does to your mind and your body. It seems to split you off from your source, universal God creation, the creator, and make you unlike him. It makes you believe that he is like what you think you have become. He's not like us. He holds no grievances. He loves or it loves. For no one can conceive of his creator as unlike himself. Remember God made you in his image and likeness and he is love all the time. We can't put out bodily images on God. That's a makeup thing. Spirit can't have those things. Spirit doesn't have those things. Spirit is love. Shut off from yourself, which remains aware of its likeness to, the, to its creator. Yourself seems to sleep while the part of your mind that weaves illusions in the sleep appear to be awake. Remember, we talked about everything we think is an illusion, an image of. If it's not love, it's not God. If it's not God, it's not you. Can all of this arise from holding grievances? Yes. Yes, it can. For he who holds grievance, says, denies he was created by love, and his creator has become fearful to him in his dream of hate. Who can dream of hatred and not fear God? It is as sure that those who hold grievances will redefine God in their own image. No, we are in, God is not made in our image. We are made in his image and he is love. As it is contained, as it is certain that God created them like himself and define them as a part of him. God does that. We have to accept it. We are made in God's image. That's it. That's all. And God is love. Therefore, we are love. Therefore, we cannot hold grievances. Love doesn't hold grievances. Love cannot hold grievances. It is assured that those who hold grievances will suffer guilt as a certain that those who hold forgiveness will find peace. 
sympathize. Those who hold grievances will suffer guilt, anxiety, pain. And those who, who hold um, those who forgive will find peace. It is as sure that those who become and hold those grievances will forget who they are as it is as certain as those who will forgive will remember. Remember, I am love. I am God's love. He created me to be love. Would you not be willing to re relinquish your grievances if you believe all this were so? That's what you have to do. You have to believe love made you in its own image. You have to believe that peace comes from forgiveness. You have to know that no one can attack you. No one can dishonor you. No one can harm you in any form. That's the ego talking. Perhaps you do not think you can let go your grievances. Perhaps you think you can't let him go. Oh, so-and-so did this to me and I can't stand it. I can't ever forgive him. Forgiveness is the way to love. Allow spirit to help you. Love can hold no grievance. That perhaps, however, it is a simple matter of motivation. You got to be willing. It's a simple matter of motivation. That's it. That's all. Today, we will try to find out how you would feel without them. Without those grievances, how would you feel? If you succeed, even by a little bit, there will never be a problem in motivation ever again. Love holds no grievance. Begin today's extended practice by searching your mind for those against whom you hold what you regard, regard as a major grievance. Some of the time will be quite easy to find. Some of these, you'll see, they'll come to you. Then think of seemingly minor grievances you hold against those who you like or even think you love. It will quickly become apparent that there is no one against whom you do not cherish grievances of some sort. This has left you alone in all the universe in your perception of yourself. Determine how to see those, all these people as friends. Say to them all, thinking of each one in turn. I would see you as my friend. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are a part of me and come to know myself. I see you as a friend. Love holds no grievances. You can name them. Johnny, I see you as a friend. Love holds no grievances. I see you as a friend. Love holds no grievances. Spend the remaining of the remainder of the period thinking and trying to think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything. Thing. Let it go. Safe in a world that protects.